right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay, so, good please. evening, everyone. So this is a uh, Sci Asia again. Today's topic is a surgical approaches for the recurrent cases of vitiligo. We have uh, five speakers today, and the uh, first speaker will be uh, Ko Ji Ro. He is a very, very famous guy <laughs> and famous uh, the professor, and uh, he is, will be the honorary president of the World Congress of Dermatology. Uh, 2023 in Singapore, and he will deliver the opening and the when to think about the surgical approaches in vitiligo. Please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Ha. Can I have the share screen? Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, first of all, I want to thank that Patrick for inviting me to chair and to give this talk. I do not do any surgical procedure for vitiligo. I'll refer my patient to Stephen Tung, my colleague at the National Skin Center. So I'm only speaking from the point of view of as a dermatologist uh, who sees vitiligo patients. We do see quite a number of them. And uh, we indicated I'll refer to uh, Dr. Tung or one of the colleagues in, at the National Skin Center. So I will talk very briefly about the referral of cases uh, with vitiligo to the, 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 uh, the surgeon for surgery. So we know that vitiligo affects about 0.5 to 2% of the general population. And I think in the Asian country, it is more obvious because of the color contrast of our skin type. The darker skin type and the vitiligo brings out the, the, the uh, vitiligo outline very obviously. But pigmentary disorder, in particular uh, vitiligo, and there's lots of experience in the management of uh, melanocyte keratinocyte transplantation procedures. So it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Teng. Dr. Teng, you ready? Uh, certainly, I hope you all can hear me. Um, yes. I feel very honored to be uh, introduced by my mentor. Dr. Go is my mentor, will okay. always be my mentor. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, uh, I think Dr. Go covered about who goes for surgery. I think uh, the, the main point that uh, we should take uh, back of is that uh, stable vitiligo patients. And then there are many different definitions of stable vitiligo patients. Most people take six months. Some people take 12 months and, and you heard about positive test uh, uh, graph result. But uh, even we wait for 12 months, in my experience, for vitiligo vulgaris, uh, you get a success rate of about 70%. So generally, there's still a group of patients, even though they have been stable for up to 12 months. Uh, when you graph All right. Uh, it's such an honor uh, to be here today and to be invited by uh, Dr. Patrick to share about our um, experience in this vitiligo grafting with a combination approach. So I'm uh, Charlene from Changi Memorial Hospital. These are my conflict of interest. Um, so I have no conflict of interest for this talk. So, well, uh, vitiligo is quite difficult to treat because we not only need to tackle with um, the autoimmune destructions uh, to its melanocytes, but also uh, the repair of these uh, destructive melanocytes. And when these medical treatments didn't work, including phototherapy, and that's where the surgical treatment would step in. So uh, the first and foremost important thing uh, for a surgical approach to, is to find the ideal candidate for, for a surgical approach, So uh, which includes those who have unsatisfactory results to the medical treatment. And uh, of course, in our center, we normally would uh, only select patients who have been stabilized for at least one year. Yes, thank you very much, Professor. Um, I think everything has been covered already, but um, okay. let me just share how we... Um, do this approach in the Philippines. Do you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, okay. So basically, it's um, the same as what is being done um, in your country. So, but here we only use uh, skin punch grafting with plated rich plasma. So, as we know, um, vitiligo is. Um, a disease that is an autoimmune condition. So what the platelet-rich plasma does uh, in combination with the skin punch grafting is to actually improve the anabolic effect on the melanocytes and also to decrease the inflammation as well. Because um, when we do platelet-rich plasma, we do improve um, the ability of these um, transforming growth factors, um, vascular endothelial growth factor, platelet-derived growth factor, connective tissue growth um, factor, and then um, insulin-like growth factor. 
We all no, see no correlation, no. Uh, no, no, I, I don't see any all. correlation at all. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see any correlation. Yeah, I, I forget you would have uh, send more melanin to the surrounding keratinocytes. Eh? Not really. I mean, the, actually, it's not an observation that I I, I purposely uh, 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 take note of, but I should take note of it and see whether uh, does it, <laughs> it prognosticate better. Okay, I think uh, Doctor He, you, you want to conclude the session. Uh, it's yeah. time up. Uh. Yeah. So it, it was excellent to talk uh, for everybody, five speakers, and uh, it's a time up. So let's conclude this uh, say Asia session for the vitiligo surgical treatment. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, Doctor Speaker. Bye. bye. Bye, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas.